Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about bluing. It's a decorative technique that is done to steel, oftentimes on sword hilts, and it's something we offer on many of our swords. You can see here, we've got a blued rapier, and you see that dark, almost black finish on the piece. That is the bluing, as it were. What it is called today industrially is black oxide. It's a hot process that we have done commercially to our pieces. It is similar to the same process that a gun bluing is done to a pistol or a firearm. And it does add a bit of corrosive resistance um, depending on some of the aspects of it. It can be a little more, a little less. It is not just heat. Uh, that will give you a similar color in some cases, or you have sometimes control to get that uh, brighter blues and almost a peacocky feather kind of look to it. But that is a heat process more than the chemical process that this modern black oxide finish is creating. Uh, in the period of time when they were finishing rapier hilts, small swords, and things like that, we would have a couple different ways that they were finishing these uh, hilts to get a color on them. Uh, if you look back at our blog post on furbishing, there's a little mention of that in there. They would take these parts and put them in a heat process, uh, usually covered with ash multiple times, working them down with a file to kind of create a, a base color surface. And then sometimes that would have different applications to it oils and things like that to make it uh, turn colors if they were able to, uh, to get that kind of a dark coated finish on there. There's also Japaning, which comes in a little later, especially with small swords. And that is more of a paint process or a lacquering process that goes on to the metal itself. There's also another process that was used in early firearms called case hardening, where they were taking a softer metal and baking it in a carbonizing material and then plunging that whole uh, heated box as it were into a water bath to create a <coughs> excuse me mottled kind of color tones of yellows and browns and things like that uh, that wasn't done on swords quite as much and uh, is a different process it's it's about adding some carbon to the softer metal so that it hardens up so it's stronger as a receiver or something like that. Where these parts would have been probably in most cases iron and you would have been trying to get a different color on there or different applications. So sometimes they were blued and then, or blackened and then they would have silver highlights polished or bits of silver added to them or gold even in some cases. Uh, a little bit later on you see blades being uh, done especially like uh, general officers swords in the Napoleonic era with bright peacocky blue blades with gold etch on there and things and that again is a heat process doing that it's not a chemical process as it were and is a little different and you got to be very careful because you're going to be messing with the tempering and everything else of the blade when you start adding that much heat to get those kind of colors and such. This would also carry over onto armor in some cases with the painting of armor or trying to blacken armor, blue armor. Those things can happen in some cases. Uh, you do see some of that in the historical record, but in our case, we're talking about the swords themselves. Now, uh, we'll take just a minute so I can put on some gloves so we can look at a piece that is historical. Uh, this is a piece from the Oakshot collection you can see that the finish on there is quite dark. It's hard to tell if this is a piece that was uh, blued with a, what they would call a, a rust blue technique where they would induce rust onto the piece and then add a chemical to create black oxide to the rust, turn the rust from red to black uh, create that coating. Uh, it's probably chemically similar to the coating you're going to see on iron and steel objects that are found archaeologically. That uh, very black, hard finish that they come uh, come out of the earth with sometimes. Uh, so that was a way of inducing that. Here we can see that the highlights have been polished bright, so it gives you some contrast on the knobs on the little bits here. 
uh, but the pommel you can see is relatively black all throughout and especially in the lower areas. The top areas may have been polished, but they've kind of corroded some since it was first made. So they were coloring them in period, but it was a different process than we use. We are happy to uh, blue our swords and rapiers. You can find it as an option on most of our pieces that where it's available. But it's good to remember that it is a decorative technique in most cases. It does help with the uh, ability to resist corrosion a bit, uh, but it will rub off with use and wear. It is not permanent. And the process for doing it today is a chemical process using heat that we have commercially done. So it is a very effective, very nice black finish as we saw on those other swords. But we don't do it to blades and we are not doing it uh, the old way, as it were, with the repeated heatings and trying to create those uh, finishes that they would have had in the past. Those are some interesting things we plan to look at in the future just to get a better idea of understanding the complete process of making these so we can make better pieces today. But today's commercial black oxide is gonna give you a much more uh, consistent, regular, shiny, smooth surface than some of these other techniques would in period. So if you have any questions about bluing, you can of course email us at aa at arms-n-armor.com. We'll be happy to answer. And we like to uh, make pieces that look good and it's an option a lot of people like but by no means is it something you have to have done.